The final uh, application I would like to show is uh, a stress measurements. Stress measurements is another very important uh, area in the in terms of uh, an engineering components and it has got more relevance in the industry and uh, the we will discuss the, the basic principle behind measuring the stress in a component by X-ray diffraction. So, we will just uh, draw some few schematic quickly and then we will take it from there. So, this is the coordinate x is towards the perpendicular to the blackboard, this is z and this is y and uh, suppose you assume that this is a uh, x ray which comes and uh, and you are trying to identify assume that this is a, a cylindrical sample which is being pulled in the uniaxial direction and you have the dimensions of d and l and this is the x ray which comes and impinges on the surface of the sample and then it get diffracted so how are we going to use this geometry for identifying the relation. So, we will write a basic expression for stress is equal to sigma y here because it is a y direction. So, we write like this force by area in the y direction and you assume that there is no force in the x and z direction. So, for this you can write some relation the stress sigma y produces the strain epsilon y and which is given by epsilon y delta L by L which is nothing but L final minus L initial divided by L naught. This is a original length, this is after you stretch it and then you get the strain and this strain is related to the stress by this, this is very famous Hooke's law. So, the stress is related by strain by this relation and we can also relate this uh, epsilon x and epsilon y or z g is equal to d final minus d initial divided by d naught. So, this is uh, the strain in the x direction, strain in the z direction is measuring by this change d final minus d initial by d naught which is the diameter of the sample also can be represented by this. If the if we assume that uh, material is if we assume that the material is isotropic isotropic Then we can write epsilon x is equal to epsilon z is equal to mu times 
epsilon y. This is also true, where mu is the Poisson's ratio. So now, how this uh, relations are related to our X-ray diffraction? That is the idea. I have to write one more schematic quickly. direction, the despacing is smaller compared to the, the planes which are perpendicular to the loading axis. You can see the, the distance is different because of the, the stress. So this is the bottom line, this is the bottom line for uh, using the X-ray diffraction. So we can quickly look at epsilon z is equal to d n minus d naught divided by d naught. So, this is your initial d spacing, this is normal, the after the stress then what is the d spacing, so that is the difference. So, we can write sigma y is equal to minus e divided by mu, where d n minus d naught by d naught. So, this is, this is the relation which is forms the basis for this uh, using X-ray diffraction. You find the d spacing and uh, I will write uh, the details, d n is the spacing of the plane parallel under stress. So, d n is under stress and d naught is without stress, so you see that uh, difference and uh, I think uh, this is the uh, basic idea behind the measurement of uh, stress using X-ray diffraction. You will be able to identify the d spacing. Uh, and you have to remember that you have to have the plane always perpendicular to the, the this is a, a normal uh, plane where N p is the uh, X-ray diffraction takes place where the plane which are perpendicular to this 
incidents. So, you have you have to make sure that this kind of informations are always obtained only from the plane which are parallel to this load or perpendicular to this load axis uh, or I would say parallel to the x ray diffraction and so on. So, you have to keep that in mind and uh, in fact, this this is what we are talking about here a simple case actual cases a biaxial and triaxial stresses are measured with uh, with an elaborate uh, procedures involved and people calculate the residual stress which is a very important uh, component in an engineering application and we can readily quantify these stresses using x-ray diffraction uh, similar based on the fundamental principles like this. So, we will not get into the details because each one will come under a special course in itself, uh, but uh, as a beginner you should know what is the basis of x-ray diffraction in, you, in applying uh, for all this uh, parameters like you know crystal structure determination, phase identification, stress measurements and so on. So, in the next class I will take you to the lab and then show actual how we measure this uh, in a material in a polycrystalline material, uh, how do we obtain an x-ray data and then how do we uh, analyze with the interface uh, uh, software today and everything is automated. So, you just uh, get the final result at, uh, in your uh, desktop, but you have to understand unless you get into this fundamentals here, then only you will be able to appreciate what the software is doing in your interface. So, that is the, the intention of this particular uh, uh, I mean illustrations what we have shown today's class. The equipment which I am going to show you is uh, another very important uh, x-ray machine which measures the uh, residual stresses in an or a stress measurement system which, which is industrially important. The you can see that uh, this is the equipment typical equipment you have a look at it and then we will discuss about the the function functionality of this equipment so this is an extended arm where you have this uh, i will probably i'll stop here and unlike the uh, bragg brentano geometry what we have just witnessed before which is not maintained here and here this is an x-ray source, x-ray source are here, it is not a diverged beam here, it is a, a parallel beam, parallel beam and the x-ray source straight away comes there and then you see that there is a, a typical connecting rod uh, which is being measured which is clamped through a, a stand here and the x-ray beams are simply falling on this connecting rod and then you have the two detectors uh, besides this. In fact, uh, the you are looking at the side view. So, the detector will move on this the curved off, off circle stage like this. So, the x-rays will come straight on the sample and then get diffracted into the two det I mean uh, detectors which is kept uh, side by side to this source. So, the difference between the previous diffractometer and this is here the x-rays are a parallel beam and, uh, and you have the uh, direct collection of the diffracted beam and then you try to analyze the uh, x-ray data. So, now you can have a close look at this uh, arrangement. So, this is one of the unique facility of this uh, our laboratory uh, a stress measurements using x-ray diffraction. Okay, you have now better uh, clarity here, yes. The source which I am talking about is this x-ray source and the two detectors are kept side by side. <clears throat> so, 
the one advantage with the uh, this kind of uh, setup is you don't have any restriction on the uh, specimen uh, size any specimen which can be fixed into the stage can be brought you can see that now the, how the scanning is done uh, the x-ray source can rotate and that off circle and then you can see that this is a source now very clearly source and the detectors are side by side the source in the center and two detectors yeah now it scans for all the two theta measurements here so this is a advantage of this particular machine of uh, any component a big component can be scanned and then you will get the data.